Good evening. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our second collection is for maintenance and repair. Please join in singing our gathering hymn number 420. All are welcome. Number 420. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel? Or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earth and shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth and what is within our grasp, we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. Philemon. I, Paul, 
an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you might do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. Disciple. 
But in the ancient world of the Jews, their thought pattern was such that if you love one, you hate all the others. And in that framework, Jesus is saying, if you believe in me, if you want to follow me, then I come first in your life. Your relationship to your God, more important, more demanding than any other relationship in life. If you come to follow Jesus, then you carry the cross with him. You give up your possessions. You take a completely different view of life if you believe in Jesus. And if you want to see that, just listen again to that second reading today. There are 13 epistles of St. Paul in the Bible. Most of them address the churches or to the leaders of churches. This is the only one of the 13 that is addressed simply to a friend. Philemon. He was a pretty wealthy person, had slaves. And one of those slaves, Onesimus, had run away. And in that ancient world, that was a great crime. The slave owner could do whatever he wanted to his slaves, beat them, even kill them, if he ever got a chance to. And it happened that this slave made his way to Rome and found St. Paul was there in prison waiting to see the emperor for judgment. And so St. Paul converted him to Christ. And now, as you heard in this passage, he's sending this former slave back to the slave owner. And he's giving him a letter So that slave, when he saw the slave owner who must have been filled with fury and ready to kill him, and is told, St. Paul wants you to read this letter first. Because the letter makes clear, Paul is sending this man back to Philemon, not as his slave, but as now a brother in Christ. He has been converted to Christ. That makes all the difference. And so we are confident that that slave owner did what Paul wanted. Some may be surprised that Paul didn't denounce slavery. No, that was part of the thinking of the ancient world as so much of human history. But yes, in time, people came to realize slavery was incompatible with Christianity. We believe our God has called all peoples to himself, called all to receive the gift of faith, to live in Christ, to become the free children of God, no longer slaves to anyone. Yes, our God calls us to himself through Christ, He is a demanding Lord. He claims the right to be the first in our life. And we've come here to renew our commitment to him, to live as his adopted children in Christ, to be his sons and daughters and heirs to eternal life.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified at the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified with the Lord and through the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We approach the eternal God and Father through Jesus, his beloved Son, and our High Priest and Savior. We pray for our church, our nation and world, and our personal needs. Our response tonight is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all may recognize their labor is part of God's work of creation and recognize the dignity of their labor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our fellow citizens and leaders may accept the truth of the sacredness of every human life and protect the life of the unborn through natural life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people of our parish and nation, for their parents and teachers, as they begin a new school year, we pray. That many will accept the Lord's call to serve him and his people as priests and religious, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dorothy Rich, Patricia Dorminen, Teresa Kelleher Cassidy, Frank Sullivan, Mary Tabler, Emily Scatz, and all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, and for those who suffer with them and those who care for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Robert Cardner, for whom this Mass is being offered, and all who have died in Christ, that those who carried the cross in their lives may now share the victory and glory of the risen Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause in silence to remember our personal needs. In confident trust, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we praise and thank you for all your gifts and for allowing us to labor in your creation. May we serve you well and build your kingdom of justice and peace through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing number 508 as the deer longs, number 508.
the gift of true prayer and of peace. Graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis Capo and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Robert Gardner, whom you have called from this world to your son. Grant that he was united with your son in a death like his. May also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Helena, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we remember to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
715. 